Today, the AWS team announced that they've added support for Amazon EFS to AWS Lambda. EFS was originally uh, supported on just EC2, but over the last several months has been extended to support EKS for Kubernetes, ECS and Fargate for containers, as well as now Lambda for serverless. Together, this means we can use EFS as an extensible uh, network file system underneath all the forms of compute that we can run inside AWS. In this video, we're going to look at how to use Lambda with EFS. To do that, we're going to build a simple application. Uh, that application is going to have an API gateway, which talks to Lambda and implements its functionality using some Lambdas. Those Lambdas are going to run inside a VPC, and it's actually re required to run inside a VPC to be able to work with EFS, since the EFS uh, network mounts run inside one of your VPCs. The one unique thing related to Lambda working with EFS is that we're going to have an access point. Uh, so we're going to have an EFS access point that describes how Lambda is going to interact with our file system, the kind of user it should act as, the permissions on the folder it should uh, interact with, uh, and what folder it should actually use to mount into the Lambda. And so we're going to actually go ahead and implement this uh, using Pulumi. We're going to start assuming that we already have a VPC with both private and public subnets, and then we have an EFS file system which has mount targets inside each of the subnets. And for each of those uh, mount targets, we're going to put them in the default security group, but we could put them in any security group that our that Lambdas will have access to. These VPC and e e EFS uh, resources could have already existed, or we could build them specifically for this application. To get started working with Lambda, let's go ahead and create an access point. The access point describes uh, what file system we're going to access, what POSIX user we should access it as, so we're going to use user ID 1000 and group ID 1000, and what path uh, to mount as the root directory for this access. And then some information about uh, the, the owner uh, for that and the permissions that we're going to use inside that path. OK, so now that we've got an access point, we actually want to create a Lambda which uses that access point to connect. Instead of creating a single Lambda, we're actually going to go ahead and create a function in Pulumi which creates callbacks for us. And each one of those functions is actually going to have a set of policies which allow us to work within a VPC. It's going to have a VPC config which connects to the subnets we specified and using the same security group that gives us access. And it's going to have a file system config, this being the new part that's available for accessing EFS. That file system config allows me to connect to a particular ARN uh, of an access point, which we'll use this access point above, and then mount that locally under the slash MNT slash storage uh, folder. Now, there's a limitation right now that with uh, Lambda, you have to uh, mount this under something underneath the path slash MNT. And so we'll put that under storage. And our callback function here will let us pass in any function we want and create a Lambda that uses that. So let's go ahead and use this to create a simple API. Our API is going to have two methods, uh, two paths on it. One, we can get slash files slash and then any file name. The other we can post slash files and slash file name. This will allow us to get and upload files from any place inside our file system. To that, we'll take the file name that was specified and we'll put it inside the slash mnt slash storage path. And then we'll just use our standard uh, APIs from within the language we're using. In this case, we're using Node.js to read file sync from the file system. And this is the beauty of being able to use EFS, is that we can just use the existing file system APIs. We don't have to use a specific uh, AWS S3 API or DynamoDB API or database API. It's so very easy to take existing code that works in the file system and extend it to work uh, inside EFS. In this case, the get will call read file sync, and the post will call write file sync. And finally, we'll export the API URL. Now that we've deployed our lambdas and our API gateway, let's go ahead and access them. So I'll post that API endpoint, the contents hello world, to file.txt. Now we can get those that file back. We can see that we return back the contents hello world from the file system. Let's do one more thing to, to be able to see more clearly what's going on with our EFS mount. So we're going to add one more method to our API, which posts to the root route. And in this case, it just runs an exec. So this allow us to run any command we want within that Lambda to access the file system. So we can see what's going on uh, at the Unix level with the file system. As we can see, we have our file file.txt. 
It was created by that same user we specified in our access point. We could even see that the permissions are what we expect uh, for this user. Finally, we can just cat that file to see what the contents of it actually are. There we go. We get the same hello world that we saw before. This is a very simple example of mounting an EFS file system into a Lambda and interacting with it using our, our Lambda functions. This creates a really easy way for me to write simple pieces of code that use file system APIs from within my language to access uh, all the capabilities of a large, uh, effectively infinite file system uh, inside AWS. Thanks.